the waiting room. Okay. Hello. Hi. Hi Good everyone. evening. <laughs> Hope everybody's excited about our Friday night happy hour. I'm Brenda Gardner. And, and I am Lisa Harrison. And we are going to be joined right now by the fabulous Ron Block, who is the librarian extraordinaire, as well as the host of the Friends in Fiction podcast. So welcome, Ron. We love you and can't wait to cheers with you. Well, while he's connecting. He's coming. He's coming. <laughs> <laughs> We're so excited to have this happy hour. It's... Cheers. I'm here. Cheers, I'm here. Ron. We are live, oh, I and cheers yet. to you, my friend. Cheers to both of you, peanut butter <laughs> and jelly. Woo, <laughs> it's Friday, guys. Um, Long week. So I'm Long drinking week. a dirty martini with four olives, vodka. Uh, what about you, Ron? Uh, gin with three olives. No blue cheese this time. <laughs> yeah, I didn't Woo. do blue cheese either. Well, and I am drinking sort of a variation on the Under the Stars mocktail that I made for the Forest of Vanishing Stars. And it is half blueberries, half um, apple juice, and about a teaspoon of lemon juice. Ooh, and tonight it was nice. sparkling apple juice with some sugar rimmed on top. Look that sounds you. so good. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> How have you been? Good. Doing well. Yeah. We're so excited to have another happy hour tonight. I so know. excited for those who can join us and who can join us later, because I know some people had conflicts, but we're really excited to have people join us tonight. So, Ron, how's your week been? You have had some exciting new projects going on. <laughs> I have had some crazy projects going on. <laughs> I had um, interviews, uh, author interviews with the library. I've done a couple of podcast recordings this week and so it's just been a long days but amazing amazing day i'm having the, the best time of my life doing the podcast oh that's fabulous yep. <laughs> i have enjoyed listening to the podcasts um there's been so many good ones it's i love it it makes fridays it gives us something to look forward to on fridays so we have wednesdays and fridays Yep, Wednesdays and Fridays and, and extras too. We have extra seconds. Well, wait till you listen to next Friday's episode. <laughs> <laughs> it's Ooh. gonna be good. It's, uh, called, it's called Diverse Voices. And I've talked quite extensively about two books, um, Revival Season and upcoming, it isn't even out yet, not until November 2nd, that um, all her little secrets Ooh. from Wanda B. Morris I had the best time with both of them and we laughed and it just really a big love fest and I can't wait for everybody to hear it. Oh, that's fabulous. Oh, that oh cool. yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. 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 That was fun. That was fun. <laughs> well, so what's been your favorite one so far? The favorite podcast? Yes. Um, We're coming up on 10. You know, I've done I 10. know. I really enjoyed and it's kind of a, um, it's personal for me, but I really enjoyed the behind the scenes um, audiobooks podcast that Mary Alice did. No, I, like I that one totally too. get it. That one was totally really cool that. just hearing it from the narrator point of view and then hearing it from the production side. And for me, as someone who does voiceover work, it was really cool to hear the different perspectives. So yeah. I really, I took notes when I listened to that one. <laughs> Well, that was a really popular one, too, so um, stay tuned. That's what I'll say. Stay tuned. <laughs> I also right. liked the Pride one. I loved the Pride one that you guys did. Enjoy. Right. I, I had the best time with that, too. Every, all three of them, they were very different, but they, had, um, they, they were fun. Um, you know, and, and, and poor Virginia Willis, I made her cry. Oh, <laughs> well, <laughs> in a good way, in a good way, in a good way, in a good way. Yeah. And it's funny how the twists and turns, like who would have thought, I mean, you certainly were doing lots of work with interviewing authors and promoting books 
before the pandemic, but it's so funny how things take their twists and turns. They did huge. It's, it's made a big change in my life for sure. All of a sudden my name is <laughs> all over the internet. I, I'm getting like books and people are calling me up and sending me emails it's like, hey, how about this person? And people like from my, even like my childhood that have um, relations to book people and all that says, so, oh, you should have my friend on and la 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 la. Oh, I love mm -hmm. it. <laughs> You're a superstar. They've only, printed, they've only printed a Matchbox cover. I can't really help them. <laughs> That's funny. But yeah, I, and I know you were d deeply involved in that already, but it's just funny how people are like, oh yeah, Ron Block, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And have you been recognized outside? Isn't that, is that a little weird for you to be recognized? Um, it's, well, you know, when we were all in Beaufort um, for the Friends in Fiction live event, there were people there was like, oh, you're Ron, can I have my picture <laughs> with you? And I'm like, Sure, I, I guess. Whatever for, you're probably thinking. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Can Lisa tell her you know, story? I, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, Go ahead. Please. Are um, you willing to tell? You don't have to. No, I I don't know which one you want me to. Tell. Oh, the the pool story. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah. Okay. Um, See, I I have not. I'm not the celebrity. <laughs> well, I've had a few moments being recognized too, and it's a little strange, like if I'm at the book, like when I was at Mary Kay's and Christie's book things, it's not strange because, you know, they're friends and fiction members or members. You're of the in book a bookstore. <laughs> and they come up to you, you're in a bookstore, they come up to you. And it's so, it's so cool to meet so many people in person in the book club. But when I was on vacation with my best friend and my best friend is not a reader at all. Like growing up, she would see a book that she liked, buy it for me, tell me to read it. So that I can just tell her about it. So like, that's just that, that's how she is. She's just not a reader at all. So it was me and my best friend and both of our mothers for a Mother's Day birthday trip. We went to Pompano Beach and we were at the resort in the pool, in the small pool. It was maybe about 15 people there. And I was in the pool having a drink with my best friend. And there was these two ladies at the end of the pool reading a Debbie McElmer book. And I was like, oh, they're reading. Debbie. That's cool. You know, I kind of noticed it, but I didn't think anything of it well when they got up to leave she came over and she goes excuse me she goes aren't you Lisa from Friends and Fiction and I went oh my gosh I was like um yeah I am I was like, just like oh I didn't want to bother you in the pool but we watch the show every week and you and Brenda are so good on the book club and I was just sitting there like oh my gosh I'm in, the, my pool. Baby, in the pool yeah. it was a little weird but it was cool and then when they left I was like it was cool. so nice to meet you my best friend goes, so is this going to start happening a lot? <laughs> and I was like, I doubt it. Yeah. No, no, I think it is. I'm just I'm glad it was Lisa it. and not me in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing I did when I stepped out of the pool is call Brenda <laughs> from the pool. And I was like, you will never believe. What yeah. Hey, Brenda, I'm in the pool. <laughs> and oh someone said. Oh, I'm sorry, Lisa, but I just think that's a great story. And the lady, I, I mean, it. that's super nice, but I just can't imagine how you were a little bit disoriented. Like, wait. I was a little. I was a little taken back. I was just like, oh, okay. You were yeah. very nice. Yeah. If you're watching, it was so nice to meet you. And I'm glad that you're friends and fiction people because they're the best. I know. And it has been awesome to, to go to, to be able to do live events again, the few that I have been able to do and to meet people yes. who are friends and fiction people. That's been awesome. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, I know Lovely. though, I know though that one of the things people are waiting for tonight, if I might be so bold, is for Please. Ron to offer his, some of his book picks. So yes. how about... Can we start with that? Yes, let's. So before you, want, you start. You want all of them or you want to spread them out? <laughs> spread them out. Yeah, mm. before I start. Well, Lisa, before you decide. You start, for everyone watching, get your TBR list ready because we're going to fire some good recommendations to you. But also, please share. If you're having a cocktail while you're watching, share what you're drinking. If you have oh, book please. recommendations, share your book recommendations. Right. You have a favorite podcast that you want us to tell Ron, or you have questions that you like to ask Ron? 
put it all in the chat. We're here to have fun and chat. It's Friday. I'll I'll little, names of people you want to hear too. People, people you want to uh, listen to on yes. the podcast. I'm, 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 yes. I'm booked for a couple of months yet, but boy, I'm, I'm happy to, to think about taking uh, whoever to the have five. They're like judge and jury. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that that's would be great. great. Okay, I have okay. my TBR list ready too. I'm, I'm gonna be a student as well. So, uh, <laughs> okay, <laughs> here we go. So my first choice <laughs> is someone that I have. Um, it, I read this book for the podcast, and her her episode is going to be on um, August twentieth. Her book just came out last week, and it was. It blew me away. It, it's called The People We Keep. Ooh. And it's Allison Larkin. And isn't that a great cover? I love it the is. Cover. I love the, the beautiful cover. Okay, so imagine the first page of this book. There's a young girl. And I think um, Christy talked about this on Wednesday a little bit because she, she and I did the interview together. So this is young teenage girl who goes out and hot wires her neighbor's car. So that she could drive herself to an open mic night to see, you know, to try to become a singer. Well, see, the dogs love it. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> let me it. mute. <laughs> no, it's fine. That's great. I love it. Uh, so, so then she goes on this whole thing, uh, uh, this whole journey um, by running away from home because she's in a really bad situation, and the people she meets along the way become her family. So it's like the family that you choose versus the family that you are born into, the kind of story. But she goes to this um, place in um, central New York called Ithaca. And uh, it, it, I am from that area too. So I knew Ithaca really well. And her descriptions of Ithaca are just spot on. It'll make you want to go there. And Christy, who had never been there by the end of our podcast, she's like, I want to go. And Ellie goes, okay, I'll hotwire her car. We'll all go together. So it's, it's this really great coming of age story of this young woman and all the things. And you, you go through the book and you just go, oh my God, don't do that. Don't do that. And then she does it. And then, but it's all, but, but it all just is the people she meets along the way and, and the struggle she has within herself are things that we can all relate to. We can all relate to this. And it just, it's just a great, great, great book. And it's so well written. And if you have listened to the podcast on August 20th, you will understand what this meant to the author and what, what her backstory is. And that's one of the things I'm loving about the podcast is that we get to hear these great stories of where the, where the books came from, where the ideas came from. And it just adds so much to it. So people we keep. And actually the, on that, even this is like bonus, here's a bonus. So on that same episode, we also, Patty and I, interviewed We Are the Brennans, Tracy Lang, and her um, debut novel, and it's getting a lot of buzz. These were both Book of the Month Club picks, and um, We Were uh, the Brennans. If you like a messy family with lots of secrets, and, and when it, as the time goes on and go like, oh, and you go, oh, my family does that, my family does that, oh, 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 I saw that coming. No, I didn't. This is the <laughs> one for you, too. This is such a great it's so well written. It's a wonderful debut. I'm surprised it isn't like her third or fourth book. So there you go. I've heard so many good things about that book. We are the Which Brennans. Which one? We are oh, the Brennans. Oh, yeah, I know. Yep, we are the Brennans. It was, it's, it's getting a lot, a lot of, um, of early buzz. And, but I, I think that equally so, the people we keep is... You heard it here, folks. If you listened closely, they're both great. They're both really good. <laughs> you got a little clue. <laughs> Except you didn't hear me because I was muted because my dogs are barking. <laughs> so Hello. we okay. have a couple of comments for you, Ron. Barbara says she'd love for you to interview Hank Felipe Ryan on the podcast. Stay, stay tuned. And all got, already set. Woo. Okay, stay oh, tuned on that one. Um, Anissa said that she loved the plot podcast. Yeah. The plot. Oh my God. This book, if you, I know this isn't even one of my picks. This is like an extra pick. It's 
a well, bonus. extra, extra, my second extra. Okay. Extra <laughs> bonus. Okay. So the plot, <laughs> we, we just uh, dropped it last Friday, and uh, Mary Kay and I interviewed this person, um, Jean Hamp Corlitz, before Jimmy Fallon shows this book as his summer read pick. So Jimmy Fallon is reading this book right now, too, along with everybody. But we were there first. We were there first. Make note of it. No. <laughs> we were there first. And trendsetters. She, we are trendsetters. Uh, it, it's so good. Um, so the book is a, a sub, kind of a washed up writer. He had one kind of successful book, but now all he can do is teach. So a student comes in and tells him this whole story about a book that's amazing. It's going to be a million seller and Oprah's going to love it. It's going to be a movie. And, and the, the guy's going, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the student won't tell him the plot. But he finally does tell him the plot of the whole story. And several years go by, the guy's still not very, the teacher's not very successful. He's like, I wonder what ever happened to that guy. He looks him up. The guy died like a month or so after he told him the plot. So what do you think he does? He decides to write a book using the plot. A plot. Oh, a plot. That sounds good. And you think that's great. And, oh, uh, and it does. It becomes like this big mega seller. Oprah loves it. It's being made into a movie by Spielberg. And suddenly through this guy's website, he gets a note that says, you are a thief. Somebody knows what happens. Somebody knows what happens. So it becomes this giant thriller. And it's like so exciting Ooh. and so like, ooh. And I, I, you know, I, I thought I figured it out, but oh, I did not know the story. <laughs> oh, oh. It's the plot, the plot. So oh, Anissa, thank you for mentioning that. Oh my God, it was so good. And and we we loved interviewing her. She was so fun and so awesome. And she's also kind of up near Ithaca too, where she is staying right now. We interviewed her and talked about that a little bit in it too. Okay. Well, I have one I more on comment, one more people. comment before your next pick. Anne says she'd love to hear Karen White on the podcast. And Anne, I agree with you hundred percent. I love Karen White. Oh, well. You know, I interviewed her uh, for the library. So uh, if you go to Cuyahoga County Public Library's Facebook page under videos, you will see um, back a couple of months ago, I interviewed her about her latest book. Oh. And I have, I have spoken to her and I know Karen. So it's not, it certainly, certainly could be in the cards. You never know. <laughs> you never know. Because um, her Trad Street series, everybody loves her Trad Street yeah. series. And, It'd be nice to talk to her about how that's all progressed. So I was we'll late to the party for that, but I did. I read the first two books in the series, yeah. so I love it. Did you read the the newest one? I think it was called The Last Night in London, or the Last no, not yet. It's, it's on my uh, TBR list. <laughs> and her story, her again, her story about where the where the idea came from, and and things were from her own youth when she lived in London herself as a young woman. So anyway, it's good. So go back and also on that same page on the Cuyahoga County page, there's all kinds of all kinds of videos there. You can go back and watch things. I don't go back and watch them. I hate my voice, believe it or not, but I'm doing a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Go figure. Go figure. Well, hey, I, I feel the same way. I, I always cringe when I go back and see the little, you know, the little frozen. Yeah. I'm just like, ooh. Yeah. I, I think we're all hardest on ourselves. It's just kind of how we are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Does somebody else want to take a turn before I keep going? Or you want me to no, we want to hear more from you. <laughs> you you don't even want to see the stack of books that's over there. <laughs> okay. Brenda and I so have what, a few picks, but we want to give the people what they want first. We want to give the <laughs> professionals a chance. Oh, yeah, the professionals. The professional yeah. Look out for me. Look out for me. Um, okay, so my next one is, um, is, is someone that we all know and love. It, it's a book that's not coming out until um, uh, October the 19th, but I was fortunate enough to have an early copy of Once Upon a Wardrobe from our own Patty hey. Callahan. And I love everything she writes, but this one has extra, extra, extra in it. Um, for anybody who doesn't know the story, it's um, a young boy, his name is George, and it's uh, 1950, I believe, when The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe was first published into the world, and George is very sick, he's very sick, he's not, he's, you know, he, his heart is really bad, he, he just doesn't, he doesn't move, he doesn't, whatever. He reads the book, and he becomes obsessed with it, 
And his sister Meg is somebody who's very factual. She, everything about it, so she, everything has to have a reason. Everything has to be lined up and fit this way. And she's mathematical and everything has to fit. And she is um, off in college, and I believe it's Oxford. But um, George finds out, figures out that um, C.S. Lewis, who wrote Lion, Witch, in the Wardrobe, is a professor at the college that Meg attends. So he says, I want you to find out if Narnia is real and where the story came from, what, what are the ideas behind it. So she reluctantly, very reluctantly, and very like, mm, I don't know about that. She goes to, and she tries to connect with C.S. Lewis to try to ask the questions on her brother's behalf because he's very quick and she really wants to make him as happy and comfortable as possible. Well, it starts this whole magical adventure and it's the kind of book where, I don't know, it's like a, it's like a big blanket in the wintertime. You think about um, being in a snowy lodge and you just want to put this blanket around yourself. That's what this book does. It's so beautiful. It's so nice and so magical. There's, there's tons of magic in it. It really makes you see the world from amazing different perspectives and by the end you know of course you're a sobbing mess by the end and they everybody it, 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 oh, oh yeah. you gotta read it. So, <laughs> anyway so this and for me and i'm not kidding when i said this this is going to be a gift and a holidays for me to give so many people uh, it's just that kind of book that it's magic and you want to share it and you want to read it and patty's really outdone herself with this so pre-order 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 <laughs> Pre yes, pre-order. And pre -order, the cover yes, is pre stunning. Um, I can't wait to read it. Yeah, the cover is stunning. And I, I think there's some uh, pre-order giveaways if you uh, check out Patty's uh, website and, and her Facebook and her Instagram. I can even bring it up here. Who knows there? And the winter it's, box they have. Oh, sorry. Yes, and it's I also, cannot and, wait. Yes, yeah, so um, I thought see what's becoming... in Harvey. Mary. Oh, go ahead. No, I'm no. sorry. I thought you. I was just gonna say I thought becoming Mrs. Lewis was like the ultimate C.S. Lewis thing, but um, oh no, no. Well, it is. <laughs> no, it is. This is very. This is really different because that was really based on fact, and um, it was a love story. This is a family story, and it's. Um, it, it, I don't know if you know this, but like my, I, with my grandchildren, I'm and they're reading the Islanders right now from Mary Alice Monroe, and we're oh, we're not in yeah. the same city, so we're doing a uh, Gramp Camp, if you will, over over <laughs> Zoom. I love and so that. We're, I'm we're camp. It, and, we're, <laughs> and we're talking about it, and I've been sending them pictures of Dewey's Island, kind of what's fact, what's fiction. So we have a meeting every Sunday afternoon until we get through the book. But I really think this is going to be our next one. It's so great for all ages. And just the lyricism in it. Like, oh, oh, oh. Uh, when so Meg good. comes back, and, and C.S. Lewis kind of tricks her into like not giving her the answers that she wants. And so he takes her down another path. And it's just, it's amazing to read it. It's amazing to read her journey. So that one's so good. Oh, but the Winter Box, everybody should subscribe to that. You get, yeah. um, you get uh, Christie's book, you get Mary Kay's book, you get. Um, Patty's book and and lots of extras, including a video that they made that okay. uh, is only for people that subscribe <laughs> to the box. Well, we were so going to do this. At you know the where end, to find all but that. But now I think is the perfect time, really it quickly, is. because we're talking about it. I'm going to share my screen just to remind. Whoops, I lost you guys. <laughs> we okay. didn't lose you. Um, <laughs> So here is the winter box and we oh, we're going to talk about it at the end, but it's perfect to mention this now because yes. yes, you should totally get it. I think it's $82 and that includes shipping. There's so many extras, but we will be giving away one winter wonderland subscription box during our live happy anniversary one year celebration that has been rescheduled to Sunday, August 15th at 7 p.m. Yay, Easter. that's our Yay. big announcement. Yay. Am I eligible? Am I eligible to win the box? <laughs> yes, I mean, the three of us, we won it already. We'll just tell them we need three. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so we're going to fix no. the, no, we're not gonna do that. I'm gonna mm -hmm. be, you will get it. 
away live that to hour. someone watching yes. live during the anniversary celebration on August 5th. Yay. So please mark your calendars. We have a great celebration and Ron will be with us that night as well. Mm-hmm. And so some other surprises. <laughs> some other surprises. So I couldn't hold it in while you were talking. I was like, ooh. I know. Oh, I was sorry. communicating with. <laughs> I was communicating with you without speaking. Going, yeah, mm-hmm. go ahead, tell them, tell them. Mm-hmm. Gave me the look. Brenda gave me this look. I'm gonna go back and watch it when I rewatch it later. <laughs> Thing this look like. It's time. It's time. <laughs> Bring it up. Bring it up. All I'm right. so excited that they're gonna give one away. Yeah, isn't that yeah. neat? All right. Well, awesome. I guess. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share one of my picks now that we've gotten yeah. that excitement yes. um, out of the way. Mm-hmm. And there were a couple reasons for this one. Let me, I've got it. I do not have the physical copy of the book, but I think I can screen share because I really think it's a cool cover. This is a debut novel oh, um, by yeah. Eleanor Ray, and it's already out called The Missing Treasures of Amy Ashton. And it attracted my attention for a couple of reasons. One, because if you like um, Evie Drake Starts Over, which I really did, you're probably going to like this book. But, um, but the protagonist, Amy, is a hoarder, and she dreams of becoming an artist, but she has instead become a hoarder. And so she hoards all of these um, bizarre things. And the neighbors next door sort of unlock a secret to her past. And I just, I guess I've been fascinated with, um, you know, hoarding and and, uh, couponing and like (laughs) all of those kind of crazy things you see on TLC for a while. And that just really drew my attention plus the cover. So I think I enjoyed Evie Drake. So I think this is a, a, is a good one for a debut novel. So that's my, my first pick. That sounds awesome. I love a good debut. I know. That's why I like to pick one. Debuts are like, if you think about the last year, starting with like The Kindest Lie with Nancy Johnson and some of these others that you're, you're like, how can these possibly be debuts? Yeah. Like there's just, there's just a renaissance of amazing books that are coming out. Oh, I know. I Especially. felt that way about The Nature of Witches by Rachel, which I was, she popped in on our last happy hour, which was awesome. Right. And it went on to be an instant New York Times bestseller. I was so happy for her. Yes, it did. That and you know, with her, with her novel too, she had some amazing giveaways with hers as a debut novel. Yes. And she planted a tree. So yeah. yeah, you're right, Ron. It's really an amazing time. For um yeah. for launches right now. So Lisa, yeah. are you going? Are you going next? That I, now that I've shared one. Yes, I will go next. My first pick is the Secret of Rainy Days by Leslie Hoot. I have a copy of that. I have. A and copy of Leslie that. is a friend to Friends in Fiction, and she is a wonderful writer. This is her second novel. And you know what? This cover is so stunning. I don't, I really don't feel like holding it up. Hold on. I want to share it. I don't feel like holding it up gives it, you really, you can't really see how beautiful it is. Yeah. So while you're sharing it, while you're sharing it, I'll, I'll say that Leslie um, had told me that Kevin Wilson uh, blurbed it and Kevin Wilson's um, nothing to see here. And the family thing. Yes. If you haven't read those books, oh my god! Oh, nothing to see here is just amazing. Isn't it hysterical? Yeah. It is. But it's hilarious. Relevant, it's not, and... but yeah. <laughs> it's okay, I'll pick that one too. Nothing to see here, but it's <laughs> a year old. <laughs> well, um, the secret of rainy days is about little bit or Nina, that's her name, and she lives in Alabama under the, you know, the watchful eye of her controlling grandmother and decides that she wants to maybe try her life somewhere else so she decides to move to New York and then um, an unexpected loss happens and forces her to come back to Alabama and face everything that she left and it's a story of self-identity learning hard lessons of acceptance 
forgiveness, um, maybe a little love in there, and um, mm -hmm. also finding comfort in the secrets of rainy days, hence the title. So it is, I started it last night and I, I'm only on chapter two and I'm already like, I, this is my weekend. So, <laughs> um, and I love Leslie. She is fabulous. So this is available for pre-order now. It and comes Leslie out on is, September 28th. And Leslie is watching right now. She just says, I'm is crying. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Leslie. Uh, she says, love y'all. <laughs> oh, we love right you back. back. Thank Great you. cover, yeah. Leslie. Awesome. Yeah. Just all of her covers. PBR are pile, I promise. I promise that I can't wait. I have I like tons of them that I can't wait to read. That's one of them. Yes. I know. Her I think we have this. always amazing, though. She always yeah. has great covers before anyone else has a great cover as well. Her first yeah. novel. It's, it's on my bookshelf. I should have pulled that one out. It's behind us, but it has a beautiful cover. <laughs> I gotta tell you something funny. Anissa called uh, "Nothing to See Here" the "Pants on Fire" book, which is pretty much yes, accurate. Yes, <laughs> very accurate. I loved it. I loved it. I loved oh, it. I and a... speaking and speaking of Anissa, um, well, I guess I'm doing it too early, but here we go. <laughs> she was going to pop in, and I just did it too early. <laughs> we don't have a script. And she Look was just with Christy about an hour ago. So maybe she can tell us I about am that. So yeah. jealous. So jealous. We're live, people. We we don't have a script. We don't I have know. a chance. We are just gonna have fun. Hey. Hey Hi. Anissa. Hello. Hi, Brandy, Lisa, Ron. Great. How are you all doing? I'm doing, we're doing awesome. great. We just were laughing about your pants on fire comment. And then I got so excited about it. I let you in early. <laughs> that, was, that, was a, that was a funny book. Very funny. It, it was, really was. It was. Well, how are well, you doing this evening, Anissa? I am good. I have been to Castro's, North Carolina to see Christy and back. So I am, have had a long day already, but it's, it's, it's just great to get to see the authors live. And it's great to, um, get to say hello to him and just, you know, great to hear yeah. all the friends and fiction fans that are there. Today was a very small crowd. I think, you know, with the COVID, um, scary, whatever yeah. right now, there was, it was a small crowd, but even then just, it was really, it was interesting to hear, you know, to get to hear her talk. And she talked about all three of her books, you know, her current book and the next two coming out. So it, it was fun. I enjoyed it. Well, if you're he, like me, you can oh, see, I could watch her, I can watch her talk all day long. Just, it's like, she's like, oh God, she's amazing. Yeah. And her, her mother was there. Was, I had met her mother before, but it was nice to get to, to chat again with her mother. It's just nice to have those connections, you know, with, with, with the ladies beyond the screen, just like, you know, the time that I got to meet you, Brenda and Lisa, Ron, I haven't had the chance yet and hope, hope that opportunity. Oh, it's going to happen. It's uh, happening. It's going to happen. The, um, I can't wait I, till we clink glasses in person. I know. I had a, a real cheers. Yes, definitely. Well, we wanted to bring Anissa on tonight because we wanted you to share about your new column on Tuesdays for the, the pub days. We love <laughs> it. It just started. Can you share a little bit about it and how people can find it? Sure. Thank you. Um, it's called Launch Day Love with Anissa. That was a title that um, Christy came up with. Christy will be the one who will put it out every Tuesday and it, and, um, it will be, um, she'll put it out because she's adding links, like if they have been on the podcast or if they've been. Oh, cool. When, um, so she's going to put it out every week. But um, what I've been doing is just going through what I spent, spent one whole day basically kind of just scrolling through the book club and just friends and fiction, just seeing a lot of what what a lot of people are saying they like from books, you know, from their monthly collages, if they put those out and just kind of trying to see which yeah. found, which I assume is the same thing you all found is basically the, the 46,000 people read a lot of different books. But um, so I'm then going to a bunch of different sites, um, Book Riot, um, that, you know, the library puts the, the librarians put out the 10, uh, John, uh, Ron, I'm sure you know what, exactly what that's called, but they put out 10 <laughs> For, for the month so I make sure I write that down and then, and then I'm just going through them and looking through it and it's not an all-inclusive list there's no way to make an all-inclusive list I'm just trying to find 
a good mix of um I'll, I'll never do political because we know <laughs> political and <laughs> books just don't seem to be able to to make yeah, it we stay away from that but that goes south and you know that, that that's Maybe. Safe, it's, safe, safe, yeah. safe. Yeah, going to stay in the stay in the safety zone. So um, it's I'm I'm real excited about it. I hope people will find books on that they're that they like, and I hope if people read them that they'll post them. And you know, it's only been three weeks. So we'll get more into being able to um to um do some more things with it or whatever. I'm going to try and make sure it's always on the the book club site too, so that that people see it there. But I'm real excited. I'm very happy that I was you know asked to do Where it. Are we? Yeah, it's a fun thing to do. And it's something I basically was already pretty much doing. So but it's just nice to be able to share some of them I've read at that point. Some of them I haven't. So it's just reading through a lot of what's on Goodreads and whatever, just trying to trying to pick what what I what I feel like and what I think other people will like, too. It's just not what I think I would like, because but but I basically like every book. I, I'm the, the, the reader that <laughs> tries to find the best in every single book that's out there. I hear you. Well, we have I'm two amazed comments. at the number okay. that you number of books that you can read. I, I just yes. like, I think I read a lot, but no, no. <laughs> yes. Audio audio is what has helped me a lot. I, I'm a terrible sleeper, yeah. so if I wake up at four o'clock in the morning. I may there's no reason for, I'm getting up probably at five anyway for school, so I'll go ahead and just listen to an hour of audio. So audio has has yeah. really changed, and I didn't yeah. like audio at first at all. I just thought I was real disconnected from it. But, you know, once you like, like when I heard Cassandra Campbell do one, I was like, oh, yeah. my, you know, how could I not like audio? You know, so I started and now I can right. listen like at twice the speed. So if it's a 10 hour book, I'm done in five, you know, so I think, you know, you just have to look for all the. You. <laughs> you I know, have... she's telling her secrets. <laughs> it, vary, it varies by, you know, author, you know, I mean, I mean, by the narrator. So it depends. But, um, you know, it's it, audio has helped me out tremendously. Well, that's crazy. Well, we have two comments. Arlene said she loves the Tuesday column and Mar Arlene and Marlene. <laughs> Marlene says that she loves the lists on Tuesday as well. So awesome. It gives Yay. us all something to look forward to. And we're just so, so excited that you're doing it. And we want to thank yeah, you for also being the group expert for the book club. <laughs> I don't know if you've noticed that title under Anissa's name. But Anissa goes and she answers questions on the page and people, she's so quick to help everyone. You're just so giving and we're so yeah. thankful for you. No, oh, thank you. I try, you know, I think it's, I think both both the book, book club side and the regular Friends in Fiction, I mean, they've fostered a very positive environment. And I think that's just a great thing. But I think, you know, there's so many books out there. I mean, even Ron, who probably gets a million he probably, uh, yeah, <laughs> correct me if I'm wrong, Ron, I'm assuming you I'm don't okay. look out there. So I mean, it's just, it's nice to be able to see what other people are reading and, you know, it always is, Yeah. you know, to, and to share with, and, and to sometimes just, just like on, on, on a Wednesday night, just sometimes one sentence about a book can, you know, if one, if the featured author or just even one of the Fab Five says something out of a book, you know, take, like, Patty interviewed um, Amy Jo Burns and Shiner before I, before Ron, before you all did. She did an event with her when it came out. And I'm from West Virginia originally. Yeah. Never heard of the book, but because of her, you know, and, uh, you know, just a lot of the stuff you do too, Ron, you know, just, I think She's amazing. so much more to you understanding the book, you know, just because yeah. sometimes you can look at what's on a book cover and you have no idea what, what that is. Right, right, right. Yeah. Right. And what a, what a great thing to be able to share it among people. It's like, that's the best yeah. thing in the world. That's Readers are such the a, a great thing about Friends in Fiction overall is I, I've been exposed to authors and books that I never would have picked up just from kind of a glance at them. And they've been fabulous books. Um, definitely. Yeah. So this just expands it even more. So we are very excited that you... Um, popped in to join us tonight yeah. and we look okay. forward to your now I'm not going to get the title right because it was very clever and alliterative um launch day love with Anissa. launch day love with Anissa we'll look Thanks. forward the to little that. heart yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that much, sounds like Anissa. a Mary Kay <laughs> I, know, I know right launch day Mary love with Kay loves alliteration with, so with Anissa <laughs> yeah well, thank you for having me. I appreciate yeah. it. I hope everyone will get something out of those books each week. And oh, everybody sure. will. 
We'll we'll oh, yeah, build on that sure. and do some other things with it. Thank you. Thank you so Thanks much for all the support. Us. Have a great, have a great night. night. Thank you. You have a great night. Thank you. You too. I love her. She's so <laughs> yeah, she's so her. encouraging and so. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I know, uh, and I look forward. I already looked forward to her posts anyway, <laughs> and now I know right, on right. days I'm like, oh, I gotta go look for it. But I, oh. I have to remember to look for Christy's post. That's the thing, because Christy's posting it. Yeah. I started yeah. looking for Anisa's, and I was like, well, where is, where is it? And it's yeah. under Christy, so it's Christy. that was fun. It's, yeah, I love seeing her. So, Can't wait till real life. Yeah. I know. We could do a couple more recommendations, or I have a couple of questions I might want to ask you to. Might be oh, fun. That might be scary. scary. That's good. I know. <laughs> I say take a little sip, Ron. I bring a I, in, with my sip. friends and fiction pen. Oh, I want one. Mm -hmm. No, these are fun. Uh, oh, these are fun wait, questions. There, oh, there, there's a new merch item coming out that everybody's going to freak out over. Really? Uh, really? I will. Oh, come on. Oh, you no, can't. No, no, no. You can't nope. do it like that. Of us. No, nope. I usually friends. tell. I, yeah, I know. And a few couple <laughs> friends, right? Right. No, I usually, I usually blab things. I'm not blabbing this one. Wow, we have that, something Ron. to look forward to. <laughs> you do. You do. Well, I you thought do. it'd be fun to play a little okay. quick round of "Would You Rather" book oh, edition. Well. So I will start oh. first. Do you prefer? Would you rather paperback or hardback? Brenda. Hardback. Hardback. <laughs> I'm I'm paperback. I love to buy the hardback because they're so pretty and I put them on my shelf. And then when I actually read it, I'll either get the paperback from the library if it's available or I'll get the library book to read because really? I don't want to mess with my <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm so weird. Okay. Um nah. Books <laughs> bookstore or library. Ooh. That's Ron, you go for it. Don't make me choose. I, I know like that's they totally not fair. Great. They have well, would, great you know, okay, let's, both of them. Let's clarify. Would you rather read in the library or the bookstore? Oh. Make it a little easier. Depends okay, that on, would be easier. Depends on the library. The, I'm like li I'm <laughs> library. When I'm in the bookstore, yeah. I'm on a mission. When I'm in the library, I'm I like to I go to the library just to it's read. True. So I'll, I'll be true. Yeah. I'm with you on that. Yeah. I like to go to the bookstore to browse, but for the reading part, I'd rather be in the library. You're right. You're right. When I was younger, um, younger, no, I'm a hundred years old. So when I was fifty, <laughs> I used to have this half price bookstore, and I'd go and just like. Every room had book, a million books in it. It was gigantic. And I would, I would go to browse. I would never read there. So <laughs> library. Okay. The next one is, do you prefer to read in the morning or at night? Mm. <laughs> I'll go first. I can't wait too night. long with these questions. I think I'll go night, even though my night turns in the morning because night for me is like 1 a.m. So it really yeah. could go either way. <laughs> but It'd go either it's way. before right. I go to sleep, so I'm going to say night. <laughs> I'm going to say night, too. I'm, I'm mostly a night reader. I, I was a night reader, but um, back in my Florida days, I had a little book group, and somebody in the group said to me, like, I like to read in the morning because it's the, when I'm the most alert and the most able to take everything in and I get more out of them by reading in the morning. I'm like, you're right, Rosemary. So I, I started <laughs> to kind of like that a little bit better. All right, Rosemary's rule. Yeah. <laughs> Rosemary's rule. <laughs> Donna says, I love to read in the Cuyahoga. Wait, did I say that wrong? Cuyahoga. Cuyahoga, Cuyahoga County Cuyahoga. Libraries. She said, I love to what? read in Cuyahoga County Libraries. Donna. Yay. Hi, Donna. Yay. Yay, Donna. That's awesome. Lots of libraries and 
people reading in the morning. Marilyn likes to read in the morning while she drinks coffee. Yep. I'm that with Marilyn. Good. That kind of go. That's a good segue into my next one. Coffee or tea? It doesn't necessarily have to be reading, but do you have a, are you a coffee person or a tea person? No coffee. I'm a both person. Um, I'm a tea. Since I lived in the South, I have a, a sweet tea. I always make my own <laughs> sweet tea. But I, in the morning, I always drink coffee. I'm a tea person. I love all types of tea. I like, you know, going into Zen tea or the different tea stores. So, oh. yeah. so do you use okay. the bags or do you use the loose tea? Both. Both. Oh, okay. Yeah, Good. I have a nice collection of teas that I like. Now, here's an offshoot question since Ron mentioned sweet tea, because that is the tea if you are in the South. You don't if even it's have cold, to say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just tea. What about you, Lisa? Are you a sweet tea drinker? Oh, yeah. I like sweet tea. Or I will drink cold herbal teas. Like I love hibiscus tea. Um, some yeah, of the I flavored like too. and peach. But I, I do I had sweet tea for lunch today. So. <laughs> I have to take it at about half sweet, like half yeah. and half, because it's just too sweet. But I do that too. I, I do like it. it. If I'm out, I'll do half and half when I make it myself. I don't make it too too sweet. It's not true. When I, I make it myself, so I cut down. I cut down on the sugar in it, so it yeah. ends up half. We've got a lot of tea drinkers in the Do chat. We? All right. Yeah, lots of tea drinkers and some coffee, decaf coffee. Okay, here's the last one, and then we can go on to <laughs> some more recommendations. I just wanted to pick your brains a little bit. This one is, this one makes me think, so... When you're reading, do you prefer the book to be from one character view or multiple characters view? Oh, sorry. Ooh. I did that out loud. You're killing me. <laughs> tell, us, tell us how you really feel, Brenda. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're killing me. You're killing me. I know. <laughs> me too, because it just so depends. It just yeah. got warm. It does. It's, you know what? It depends on the right. Oh, her dirty martini is kicking in. <laughs> I thought it was just thinking so I'm thinking too much right now. <laughs> I think it depends on the writing because um, it, it, it totally depends on the writing. I know, but if you had to pick one. If I had oh. to pick one. I'm going to go with multi only because multi views because there are some books that I really enjoy that way and it gives some variety. But I really appreciate both. But if I had to pick one, at least that one gives me some variety. Because yeah, if you're stuck yeah. in the head of one person that you don't want to be stuck in the head of, that's, <laughs> that's the only way to go for the whole book. That's the only way to go. Well, I like the multi too. And I think the reason is if I had to, get, if I had to pick. But um, because you, you can look at the same kernel of the story and you could see the same thing from different perspectives. And I think... Yeah. Um, you know, uh, I think that's probably gives us a broader view of the story and, and a, a more rich experience with it. I'm, I, I was acting like it was an SAT question. I mean, I was really like, <laughs> oh, um, I <laughs> I'm going to go, I'm the outlier here because I think I would pick the single view simply because I'm kind of a linear thinker and I kind of mm -hmm. like things to unfold, but I, that's not that I don't enjoy it the other way but it's like my natural tendency. Agreed. I'm, Very I'm going, cool. I'm going that with was, that one. That was a fun little- That was fun. That was really fun. Deep dive. Yeah. I could do- <laughs> I know. That kind of, we'll do some more at our next happy hour. Ron, I think you have a couple yeah. more. I know the people are waiting. <laughs> They're waiting with bated breath. Okay, so. Um, this next book is by an author. It's not, it's forthcoming. It's not coming out till September the 21st, but as usual, I'm so amazingly fortunate. I get early copies of things a lot. Usually if I beg, then I get them. But, um, this is a, a writer who, when his first book came out, I was immediately hooked on his style and his writing. And, but we have Wiley Cash coming out with uh -huh. When Ghosts Come Home. 
September the 21st. Ooh. I have, this is a book that I, like I told you, I'm looking forward to reading it because it's really next on my list to read. But everything that this, uh, this writer has written has just blown me away. His first book, A Land More Kind Than Home, I re recommend it still to everybody I know. And I buy copies for people. It's just a brilliant Southern story told from multiple. Spur I, I, I better have some more <laughs> in my drink. You were talking about Lisa. What were you saying, Ron? <laughs> <laughs> multiple perspectives. And, but everybody, it's just, everything is like, you, you just kind of like, lose your breath a little bit with their with their viewpoints. So he wrote Land More Kind Than Home, This Dark Road to Mercy, and The Last Ballad, all of which go back and read before this one comes out because they're, they're, they're really, he's like one of my top five favorite living writers, amazing. But this one is about a sheriff. He's in bed with his wife. They hear a plane crash. He goes to the plane crash site and it's a big plane that crashed. And this is on the coast of North Carolina. So, you know, we're in the South. We're, you know, we're, you know, where we like to be with the books. <laughs> and uh, there's nobody, there seems to be nobody around, but there's a, a body that's been murdered nearby of a local person. So how, what does this all mean? And, and so as usual, uh, Wiley goes in and he, and he talks about um, the dip whys and the hows, but of course, everybody has secrets. Everybody has uh, things that they're trying to hide from others. And as he launches an investigation into this murder, lots of secrets come out. And I am so looking forward to reading this book. I can't, I can't stand it. Like a new wild oh. cast is like, ah. And ah. when does it come out again? September the 21st. Awesome. Pre-order. Yes. <laughs> or put on hold at your library. My, yeah. My TBR list is just. Well, I'll, I'll report back on this one, but I, I can't imagine yeah. that it's not just as amazing as his other books. He's, he just, he has a, a hold on the human condition and just people's relationships that you just love to read about. So um, I just, oh yeah, I could go on all day. I'm obsessed. It's oh. exciting. I, I want to read that one too. I do too. See, that's just not oh. good. My TBR pile is getting bigger and bigger. And I know he's going to be a guest on um, Friends in Fiction coming up as well. Oh, so. good. Oh, yay. Yeah. Looking forward to that. Awesome. Hopefully, Bridget, they'll let you me wanna... guest, oh. guest host that night. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Brenda, do you want to do your pick now? Yeah, I'll share a quick pick. I don't have a copy of the book, but I will try to share my screen because, and this is one of those, this sort of is under the category of like Anissa was talking about, people have kind of diverse interests in books. And this is one that is coming out in November. So it's not, it's going to be a while, but it's, Dave it's the Every Eggers. by Dave Eggers. And it's a sequel to, the Circle, which I thought was phenomenal. And it, it was a technology book about a, uh, a tech company that had grown, not unlike one that we all are familiar with, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, had grown into every facet of people's life. And, and this book explores that more when the technology company, technology social media company merges with an e-commerce mega site and a person determined to take it down. So that was not a book I would have thought I would have enjoyed, but I just, you know, I, I just ate it up. I mean, it was like- Don't you love when that happens? Something that yeah, you think is no. gonna be in your cup of tea is suddenly and like, it, oh my God, I love this. That's and I just best. couldn't stop reading it. And it was kind of like The Martian when I read it. I was like, I, I don't read science, you know, that kind of thing. And I just I was like, ah, turning the pages. But anyway, that's- that's my pick for an upcoming um, awesome. non-name. Let me stop the share on that. Okay. I'll do mine quickly. Um, mine is If the Shoe Fits by Julia, Julie Murphy. Oh, I love And Murphy. I'm so excited. She's wonderful. About this because it is a retelling of Cinderella. And it has a plus size lead, which makes my heart smile. I love to have plus size leads and 
show that there are plus size women out there and men or women love us just the same. And she is the lead and there's love in there. It kind of has a bachelor kind of vibe to it, but it is a retelling of Cinderella, which I love. So it came out on Tuesday. So it's available for purchase now. Oh, good, good, and good. I'm super excited. And she, her, her book, Dumplin', was an amazing film yes. on um, Netflix, yeah. I think it was. Yeah, one, of my, one of my best friends uh, worked on Dumplin'. They filmed that here in Atlanta. Oh, and, they did? Uh, yeah, she just was praying to meet Dolly Parton, but she didn't get to meet her. Oh. <laughs> didn't um, happen, huh? No. Oh, that's too bad. But um, so, yeah, that's my second pick. That's now, great. I know Ron has another pick, but before he shares, Brenda, do you want to do our announcements? And I know Ron might have some announcements to share, too. Well, I would love to do a, a couple real quick. I'm going to mention, once again, since we talked about it earlier, about the Winter Wonderland box that um, is available for pre-order. And also, to a lucky someone who comes to our um rescheduled one-year anniversary party on August 15th at 7 p.m. Eastern, someone is going to receive a Winter Wonderland box. So we're really excited about that. And I have to share real quickly, I can't find the actual comment, but Sharon Person said earlier when we were talking about the Winter Wonderland that she is from Minnesota and doesn't really care anything about a Winter Wonderland, but she's excited <laughs> about the box. <laughs> and then, I'm with you, Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> and then um monday night uh at 7 p.m eastern we have our book club session uh, with Kristen harmel and the forest of vanishing stars and i cannot wait yes that's gonna be i'm gonna awesome. try to crash that because i love that book so much please oh. crash we yeah you, you don't have to you. crash it even <laughs> oh. Just, I, you know, you go into something thinking whatever, 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 and you end up loving, loving. We're so definitely looking those, forward to talk to Kristen about Sorry, that. my book fell, so I'm, yeah. So both of those time. I'm excited about, August 15th and August 16th. Yep, double dose. Yep. <laughs> well, right we on, do have right one on. question from the chat box that I think would be fun to answer that kind of goes along with the this or that. Carrie wants to know, do you read one book at a time or two or more at a time? Is she asking Ron? She's asking us. Oh, oh, I got gotcha. you. All three of us. Oh, Ron's holding, he's trying to decide. <laughs> no, no, it's always more than one, always more than one. But I'm just going like either four or five, depending on. Oh, wow. What I'm going Because I do a lot of audio also. So mm -hmm. I'm in the car, I'm, it's audio, I'm home, it's this, more. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, I usually I got three about, books going it's easily at the same I time. I think it's three usually. I have one on my Kindle, one um, paperback or hardback print book, and one on audio. But I try not to listen to two books at the same time. You know, if it's on a different device, I feel like it's different. So I can't read two paper books at the same time or two Kindle books. I just do one of each. Yes. I do one to two. I'm not an audio book person. I just can't seem to keep track of the story, especially when I'm trying to drive and listen to audio. So I'm a one to two, usually a Kindle and a, a physical book. I got really con. And I got really confused. I was trying to read The Clover Girls and what was the other book? And they were both about uh, people who had amazing summer camp experiences. And there was sort of a, a reunion of sorts. And I was getting one character confused with the other. <laughs> was it the, the Golden Hotel, the Alyssa Friedman book? No, I'm trying to, what was it? I can't, I'm sorry, I can't remember, but. You can tell me later. <laughs> I do have one comment for you, Ron, that I have to read, and it's it's a little personal, but my mom is watching, and her comment was, Ron is so cool, and I agree, so I had to share that with you. Hey, Mama. Hey, <laughs> hey Mama. Hey, Mrs. Mom. Hey, Mama. Thank nice you. Oh, my God. <laughs> she doesn't care about if, me if, at all. You, I, I'm right, right. Ron is, me and Brenda are old potatoes, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, Ron old. is so cool. <laughs> 
That's so sweet. You, you have no idea what comments like that mean to me. I, I'm anyway. If you knew me, you'd know. <laughs> oh. Anyway, I have. I do have one more. Yes. Okay. We will we'll close up with Ready? that. Ready? Yes. Okay. Yes. So this is a book that um, a friend has written, and she's written some other books that have been, you know, bestsellers and uh, things like that. But it's called Woodrow on the Bench, and it doesn't come out until October the 26th. But you are going to want to pre-order this book. I can't. I can't even, I can't even. So when I got a copy of this book, I also got Doggy Treats. Aww. And I also got Woodrow's face on tissues. So that'll tell you what you're in for. Aww. If I was a female, so, some of the women that got copies of this book um, also had a waterproof mascara Aww. in their box. So oh, oh, and I, I, got bacon, I got bacon cookies, but they're gone. They're gone. They're gone. <laughs> Um, but this is a book, uh, Jenna Blum is an amazing writer. She's written The Lost Family, uh, The Storm Chasers, but this is a memoir of her last um, months with her beloved Woodrow. And it's, um, she they live in Boston. The story of her and Woodrow is just unbelievable and it, it will make you cry, just so you know oh. up front. But anybody who's had a pet that they've just loved and loved through mm -hmm. this thing and learned learned about themselves from from caring for this pet are going to just attach themselves to this book and i just if it's okay i want to read this quote from my, one of my favorites elizabeth berg about the book it says a touching tribute as well as a gripping story that will make you laugh and cry it will also make you understand the majesty and wisdom imparted by the animals we are lucky to keep by our sides for as long as we can don't you want this now? Don't you want yes. now? Yes. I love Elizabeth so, Berg, too. I do, too. Yes. Oh, me, oh, me, too. Oh, She's one of my favorites. But this book is just so, I, I, I don't even have the right words because it's just so touching and so, and, and so reflective, too. It says so much about life and what we think about our pets and people in our lives, too. So um, pre-order, she, she's going to be a guest on the podcast. All right. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. So, well, we would also love for you to plug. We know your podcasts are every Friday, and we already look forward to that. But are there yeah. any other events that you would like to plug? Oh gosh, I don't know. Like, I'm going to be at the Lollapalooza. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, that was last week. <laughs> that was last week. Yeah. No, I think um, while well, the podcast is really good, you know, we've got some great things coming up every Friday. Stay tuned for all of those. Somebody mentioned earlier about Hank Phillippe Ryan. That is going to be one of the one of the things upcoming. I will say that coming up on, I, I, you know, recently I did an event called of Reunion Beach, which was all the people that wrote um, something in oh, there, and it was um, so wonderful and so amazing. But one of the voices in there that I didn't really know very well was Ger Gervais Haggerty. And she wrote this book called In Polite Company. And it's so unbelievably amazing. And she kind of writes in the vein of Dottie Frank. You know, you can tell, I mean, there's a lot of similarities there. So if you're missing Dottie Frank, this is a good one. She's going to be with me on August the 23rd. So I'm really, really excited about that. I'm very excited about that. And then last night, it's, and it's available where I sent, sent you before, the Cuyahoga County Library page under videos. Last night, I had this amazing interview with Leah Weiss, who wrote All the Little Hopes. And if you haven't read this book, here's another pick. Add this to your <laughs> list. If it's two, two people, they couldn't be more different. They end up in during World War II. It takes place in 1943, 44, and 45. World War II, East Key. East North Carolina town. You know, we love North Carolina. Uh, and they, they, they become friends. They couldn't be any more different. And they, um, they witness things. They love Nancy Drew. So everything in their life is, is, is a mystery. And there is a mystery in the book because soon they actually, and this is true, they put POW Nazi war criminal camps in North Carolina. So they have that in there too. So they're wow. trying to solve that mystery. And it's just amazing. And she didn't start, she didn't publish her first book till she was 70 years old. Wow, so really, that is really so 
fabulous that is book. So inspiring. Oh my gosh. I think yeah. I read it. I think I, well, I think I read She wrote she wrote um, um till the um uh till the creek rises or until the creek rises, whatever. Probably right I, remember, there, I vaguely remember reading this thinking, wow, that's so inspiring to have her first book published when she was 70. If the Creek Don't Rise, that was her first book that she, wow. after she was oh, seven. Oh, cool. This is that's her so cool. Those are my big announcements. <laughs> well, thanks so much, Ron. We had so much fun with you tonight and all of your recommendations. Oh, we always have fun. I know. <laughs> always fun. And our next happy hour with Ron Block is scheduled for October the 1st, which means we might get a little mystery and Halloween type stuff, mm. at least for me anyways, because I know I <laughs> never know. <laughs> you know, I love a witchy vibe. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll bring the doggy treat. <laughs> okay, witchy vibe from Lisa, doggy treats from <laughs> So keep put that on your calendar as well. And yes, thank please. you guys for thank joining you everybody us. for joining us. Oh my God, I love love it. I can't wait to go back in and see all the comments. Yes, there's so many comments. Um, lots for you, Ron. Everyone is so grateful for you and your recommendations. And oh, we are so grateful that you joined us because we love talking with you. So. We could talk to you forever. <laughs> Please, I love me some peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we love well, we you looking, too. <laughs> yes, we do. So we are looking forward to the next time. And thanks so much again for joining Thank us you. tonight. Yes. And everybody yes. have a great weekend. Bye, guys. Bye. Thanks, Bye -bye. everybody. Thank you.